We're just about ready to leave the therapy place. We're going to drop some knives off in that hedge trimmer. Go by the bagel place. Test out some serrated knives I did for them. And then we're going home. I think I see grass in my future. I think I see rose bush pulling with a truck in my future. It's going to be one of them kind of days, I think. Tides low at 8, 59, 8, I don't know, almost almost 9 o'clock. So I don't think we'll be going to the land of the Nala. But maybe tomorrow. I got, a, I got a text from my buddy Dick down there, and he says, Max, where else can we go? The beach is dead. I texted him back. I said, man, I already know that. So we're all hunting around for some place to go. I think I got a report that the mumbles, I mean that the uh, real guru, not the real guru, the other guru, Mr. Kenny, he was at the Mexican place, Gray Matter City, this morning. But I haven't heard from him yet, so we'll have to play that by ear. Stand by, I'll get back to you. We're at the Virginia Beach Town Center. I just dropped off. I just took the uh, bagel knives and tested them where the bagel shop is. And then I got a phone call. You know how that goes. In that box right there that Chris is holding is a, a whole set of uh, red handle fiberware knives. I think there's uh, six or seven of them in there. And we got a little action this afternoon. Plus we got to do those uh, Japanese knives we picked up yesterday afternoon. I'll get back to you. I'm not home yet. I'm just at the store. As you can see, I'm in there. Red handle. In that durable shape, too. Look at the chips along the blade. Look at that dishwasher stain on them. And that's some. Look at that tip. Mmm, bad. Well, I'm in the house now. And looking at the other knives, they're in decent shape. I don't see this one, the long slicer has a little bit of dishwasher stain on it. But the uh, Santuco is okay. Only the big chef's knife is the one that's in bad condition from the dishwasher. Let me see if I can get you some pictures of it. If I put it against that black background, you can see all the little microchips on the blade. And this is, I mean, it's not as bad as some I've seen, but it's a pretty rough looking ticket. No, we'll take care of all that. Mm -hmm. How many we got? We got uh, three, five. Five taquitos. Okay. Japs. In a few minutes. And fabulware. <laughs> now that's just not right. I got them all buffed up now, cleaned up. I'm going to sharpen them now in a minute. That's compound. This one's coming along okay. All the dishwasher stains are gone. When you get the uh, little polish on, you can see all the places on the blade. You see them reflecting in the sunlight? See them? <laughs> Well, it's Thursday. It's still blowing hard. The bay is rough as bricks. Can't really tell it too good. 
here, but it's cooking. This is a continuation from yesterday's. I knew I was going to get a few more knives today, so I figured I'd just roll them all into one. This morning I had to pick up some shuns. I got uh, four steak knives, a chef's knife, a little like large para or utility, whatever you want to call it, and a little para over here. They're not in too bad shape. I did these uh, about a year ago for the guy. But you can see that they in the dishwasher. Dishwasher kills them. I'm trying to find that one spot. Oh, there it is right there. See that spot right there? That's what dishwasher soaked that hard carcinogen puts a little chip right in the blade. That's nothing but, that's not from use, that's from dishwasher. See that stain running down there? Caustic soap. The steak knives are, that one's got a little chip in the blade right there. This one looks okay. No, oh, wait a minute, it's got a chippy right there. This one's okay. This one's okay. Okay. And I got some more. I got to pick up some more shuns this afternoon for my guy. He's a chef at Virginia Beach. He's got two big chef's knives. I won't see them for about three more hours, though. I think I showed you these yesterday, or maybe the day before. These are the carbon steel ones that I did. I think I, I think we already reviewed these. But I had them out here getting ready to put them in a bag. They turn out real nice and carbon nice. Okay, I got to get it work. I'll get back to you. One of the things I've never shared with you that's a good thing to know, when you're putting the compound on a sister wheel, you need to put some knives under the, so the compound actually don't waste it. It falls on some of the other blades. That way it's already on there, and it really makes a lot of difference. You polish them all up on the back end, along the blade. Stand by, I'll get back to you. I don't know if this thing's on or not. Yeah, it is. Well, it's 2.30. We're getting ready to go to pick up some more shuns. You can see I have grass duty this afternoon when I get back. This grass is growing like wildfire. This is one week today. It's been grown a week. Or either six days. I'm not sure if I cut it Wednesday or Thursday. I got it. Stand by. That's got another call. I gotta pick up some yard stuff, hedge trimmers and like that. I'll be busy this afternoon and tomorrow morning. Well, I picked up the uh, shuns and the uh, three sets of hedge trimmers. You ain't gonna believe the shuns. I'll show them to you when I get home. There's a two of them. It's a chef's knife and a, a large type para. And the guy's been carrying them to the farm fresh. And the farm fresh has been running them through one of those pull-through sharpeners that they use. Copy. I see him. Yeah. And the sides are... It's, uh, it's hard to describe on a video. You're just going to have to see it. <laughs> just to see how bad those pull-through sharpeners can be when they're abused and used incorrectly. I mean, this is a power one. That's, that's, I forget... I forget who makes it. It's stainless steel box with three, with two round red stones that turn, you know, counterclockwise. Or like, I don't know what, where, you know, one turns one way and one turns the other. And you just pull the knife through it. But like I said, when it's used correctly, when it's new and the stones are in good shape, it, it does a pretty good job, believe it or not. But uh, when it's used incorrectly or the stones are messed up, you're getting ready to see what it looks like. It's terrible. And you 
just hit. Look at that big one, how high the scratches are up on it. And a little one. Look how bad a shape the blade is in it. That's terrible. <laughs> the jets are flying today. Can you hear them? Nice shuns like that. Go get them in shape. Look at this one. It's a long ways from being flat. But it ain't too bad. I mean, you know, just a little bit of here and there and we'll have it ready. Power sharpening stones. Look at that right there. We're at the hospital getting some drugs. Then we'll be on our way home. I don't like this stop here. This means work. I thought I was going home. Head strimmers. More head strimmers. Little head trimmers. These aren't too bad. I looked at these. The rest of them just need a little sharp. Now we're hunting cedar mulch. I gotta get a wagon. Stand by. Out of stock. Aha, I like it. Now this stop I'm gonna like. This could be my favorite stop of the day right here. While I'm here. Just a box, right? No, no. Six bottles of black ink. Red wine. California. We had it at a restaurant the other night. We liked it so much we bought a half a case of it. Once we found where we could get it. I like it. The wonders of the clone. You ain't gonna believe it. it's gonna be beautiful. When I get through, it'll be beautiful compared to what it was. Oh me! Stand by. Silver's gone way up, or because she sent me a list of my pattern, and it doesn't cost anywhere near what. That pattern cross. I need to send that to me. She knows what she's got in her floor. All the shoes are done. Steak knives going back in the box. And I even finished up these nice to keep those. Stand by a minute. Sort of like something Dracula would hang out in. Nice box for the shoes. Dracula box. Good night. Three hundred and oh, I got it upside down. Oh no, no. My eyes are upside down. Three hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It's four, four steak knives. Great balls of fire. No telling what this little set of three costs. Oh, maybe, wait a minute. Maybe I can tell you. The uh, eight inch chef's knife is 169. That's this one. The six inch utility knife. Is a hundred and nine dollars. That's just the keto here, and the little para six, five, and three. Gladys, come back here, Gladys. 
$89.99 for those little parrots. Great balls of fire. But they're nice now. I can't make myself say shun, but that's what they're called. Shuns, not shuns. I've been calling them shuns for six or seven years. <laughs> shuns. Anyway, these babies turned out nice. I was skeptical of how many scratches we could get at, but we got almost we got almost all the heavy ones out. There's a couple little teeny one hairline ones. You can see them. I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're right there. But they're not, you know, hardly visible. This little one took a lot of work to get the blade flat, but I finally got it. Okie dokie. I just got another. <laughs> I just got a phone call from a guy. What time is it, Chris? Five six oh four. I'm coming by with some knives. Pretty, I got your address. I'll be by there in about an hour. Sound like he's bringing an old Dexter 8 inch. I don't know if it's a chef's knife or a butcher knife that his father had. He's this rusty. So I'm going to sharpen it and get it restored. And I'm bringing some kind of hunting knife too. Let you look at it. So I don't know what that's going to be like, but it should be here in a little while. We'll have to take a look at it.